Hey guys, welcome to my Chris Chan update video. Did you like that uh, that Let's Play intro right there that I just did? Anyway, so if last week was the most boring week in the history of Chris Chan, this would be one of the more interesting weeks. Chris had a full meltdown on Twitter that lasted for several days, and I'm going to be talking about the whole thing from the beginning. So, Chris has been um, explaining for a while that he does not like it when the people that he follows on Twitter block him. The general pattern of events is that Chris will retweet someone's tweet or he'll comment on someone's post. Usually these are fan artists that he likes, or comic book writers, or voice actors like Tara Strong. And then Chris's audience, the several thousand people that follow him, will go into the mentions of the person that he has retweeted and start writing things about Chris, like, oh, this freak believes in the dimensional merge and stuff like that. And then, if the person that Chris retweeted gets annoyed enough, they'll just block Chris, either because they know him by reputation or because they just want this barrage of weird comments to stop. So, Chris will retweet people, and then he gets blocked by them because the people following him are so annoying. And Chris has this gif of someone running as fast as they can into a solid brick wall that he uses to show how much it pains him whenever he gets blocked by someone. So he's used the metaphor of him hitting a brick wall to show the physical pain that he gets whenever he gets blocked. So, the story starts with Chris once again being blocked by someone on Twitter. Oh my gosh, angry face. Look, people. All I was doing was complimenting on the artwork the dude did for Dusty. Why must you haters reply to everything I respond to on anything? Because that's what they're doing, Chris. They're following you on Twitter so they see what you post. If you don't want them to respond to you, you gotta block them. Chris continues, You lot do not need to respond. In fact, may I just plainly suggest you lot back off and not say anything. Thanks to you lot, now Dusty's blocked me too. The feeling is still not funny. And then he has the gif of the person running into the wall. So, this is his, his visual metaphor for how he feels whenever he gets blocked which is obviously not a healthy way to deal with this kind of event. If he's feeling this physical pain, even if it's just bottled up rage or bottled up anxiety, when he gets blocked by someone on Twitter, then he needs a reality check. Obviously, Chris ne Chan needs a reality check, but he needs to not care so much. He continues, Hopefully, you are all now seeing the wrongs you are doing in your lollygagging. Ugh. And for y'all's information, my mind and soul has been on the recent actual events of C-197. You lot don't know what you're talking about. So he's saying that uh, his mind and his soul have been bouncing between both universes, and so when people say that the dimensional merge isn't happening, obviously they're wrong. While I'm feeling as outraged, I feel like I may as well remind of the others who have blocked me on Twitter because of you haters. And then there's a whole list of people. Uh, St. Tabitha, Jesse Nowak, Danielle Dover, Josh Scorcher. I can't even have a simple life separate of my responsibilities. Why do you trolls always have to ruin it all? Sega Sister, Lightning Bliss, all these people who blocked Chris. Oh, that rhymed. I did not mean that to rhyme. Also, Doopy Dover of Planet Dolan has blocked me. That was the first in the series of the issue of me being blocked instead of the haters. So, what Chris is actually mad about is that people will go and harass these people who he likes, and they'll block Chris instead of blocking the people who are harassing them. Now, if I was someone Chris liked, if I did something else and Chris likes me for whatever reason, and whenever Chris retweeted me, I'd get like hundreds and hundreds of messages about people just saying random stuff, Chris is the source of that engagement, so I would just take the easy route and probably block Chris instead of individually blocking the hundred other people. So even though I understand why Chris is upset about this, his solution of, oh, this person from Planet Dolan should block all of the haters instead of me, isn't really realistic. He continues, what do you haters think? I am now seriously contemplating taking that route to protect myself on Twitter, which shamefully would make my tweets not publicly viewable. Think about that, trolling bullies and haters. 
I could totally block you all out, but at the expense of everyone else. That would make Twitter totally useless for you, Chris. If you're blocked by everyone you want to follow, and if no one can follow you because your tweets are public, or private, then you wouldn't be here. There'd be no reason for you to have a Twitter. Also, and then I wouldn't be able to make the series, so that would not be good. He continues, I really do not want to have to do that, but I am as sure as the time of macing that jerk's feet. What? I am as sure as that time of macing that jerk's feet that I will protect my tweets if it comes down to it. He maced a jerk's feet? I do not know what that is in reference to. You bullies and haters have brought this on yourselves, and you are scraping the bottom of the barrel. It's so weird, because Chris is sometimes on the precipice of being self-aware to the point... Chris will project what he's doing onto the haters and trolls, and for him to do that, he has to be self-aware of what he himself is doing, right? So is he self-aware on some level? That is a question that I want an answer to. I want your opinion in the comment. Is Chris self-aware? So this is another tweet that he uh, put out a couple hours later. Hey everyone, I am feeling okay right now. But positive moment aside, I actually had a nightmare that I'd like to share. And so, this post is not as, uh, this is not related to the blocking stuff, but it's actually very funny. I actually had this same nightmare years ago in my childhood or so. The Disneyland nightmare. Various things happen in it. The most haunting being getting shards of shattered pottery dug into my arms on the rides. Some flames, too. And too many watch-your-head moments with low ceiling beams and rising floor beams. Duck and jump. Duck, duck, duck. Jump, jump, duck. Jump, duck, duck, jump. And the travels back home from there being cursed by good fortune. From during the visit to Disneyland, this park was in a city in Virginia, whose name was very similar to New Hampshire, but not the actual state. More of the same happened on the way home, too. Pottery shards vehicular risks and accidents, passing vehicles with axe blades hanging from the driver's side windows, so you seriously have to duck. Also, demonic individuals like Maleficent were in the park being really demonic as well. Do they have hyperrealistic blood, Chris? I even had a figure trio of the three guardian fairies of Aurora, for some reasons, were reveal themselves to be Alvin, Simon, and Theodore, the chipmunks. But seriously, this repeat Disneyland nightmare really frightened me. Yeah, not meaning to offend anyone, but I'm gonna stay away from Disneyland and world parks. I am appropriately scared. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Lightning, heart, lightning. So, this sort of works into my theory that I talked about in that one, um, top five reasons for Chris Chan's delusions thing, when I said that if he's taking an anti-anxiety med that might be messing with his dreams, uh, this is just further evidence that that could be possible. If he's having a dream that takes place in a similar location to another dream he's already had that seems very realistic, that, th those are sort of uh, symptoms that can come about from anti-anxiety meds, and we know that Chris is on those kinds of meds, and similar dreams to that could be reinforcing his idea of this alternate dimension that he thinks he is in contact with. It's, it's just super interesting. Well, I think it's super interesting, and if you're watching this, hopefully you do too. Chris wrote a fantastic speech um, about the rebels and haters uh, in the other dimension that are waging a war against all the superheroes, and in the end, he quotes Dr. Martin Luther King in order to get his point across about this dimensional merge, and it's amazing, and I could read it to you, but there's no need to because Chris made a video of himself reading it, so I'm just going to play that. Hello everybody, Christine Chandler coming to you live from home once again in the utility room. And this time I got a whopper of a speech for everybody that needs to be well heard and listened. And I did put it on Twitter. I'm, I'm going to read it. It came from heart, soul, mind. My mind, my heart, my soul. And if you think I could just remember it all from just having written it once... Sheesh! What planet are you living on? <clears throat> Hello, everyone! 
I've just talked with the War Rebels and Haters in Dimension C197. And I'm going to share the statement with the Rebels and Haters here in this world and Dimension. For those who don't know, this war is between the, super, the CPUs, console patron units, deities, heroes, superheroes, and the villains and supervillains who are acting against the prophecies and destinies that all have been happening, are happening, and shall happening, be, shall be happening. In the progress between this Earth of 1218 and our Earth of C197, I personally am not one for warfare. Really, Chris, because I've been reading your Sonichu comic for a video that I'm making, and um, you had 10 different people electrocute a guy. You had a one-week-old baby slice someone's arm and penis off, and then you hung someone else by their wrists from the ceiling, and other heroes used him as target practice. So, uh, yeah, you can't really say that you're not pro-violence, because that is a thing that has certainly happened in your past, and that is documented. And I don't instigate or condone such. But the villains still will do what they will because that is their agenda and they refuse to change. But we the heroes and deities do what we all must to stand and fight to defend the good of both worlds and dimensions. Like all heroes before us, we defend and fight for all of you. For y'all's freedom, safety, good health. And we will not stop defending because we really do care for all of you. Our peoples, individuals, OCs or original characters, creatures big and small, and everyone else who loves and lives freely. In the end, our two dimensions shall be merged and we will all be able to live fully tangible with each other and everyone as soon as possible, as it has been destined and prophesied. Now to all of you haters and hazers who try to take us, the heroes and I, a CPU and a Sachu, down with the crass and unnecessary remarks, commentary, and outdated dirt footage and crap. I look down upon all of you. Commentary and outdated... Oh, he's still talking about the um the pepper spray incident. He's like, yeah, that's outdated. That was years ago, guys. I just happened to pepper spray this, per per this totally innocent guy. But that was a long time ago. Stop bringing that up. Oh, when he says I look down on all of you, he means he looks down on all of us as in he thinks that we are morally lesser than him. He's looking down on... Not he's looking down on us like God looks down on us. He's looking down on us the way that someone would look down on someone that they don't respect. And I feel shame and sorrow for all of you in your own respective lack of self-confidence and feeling small, feel like, feeling like you all have to resort to thrusting hatred to make an emotional high for yourselves like a really bad drug that just eats away at your soul and being. And I do understand I recognize how all of you thinking I am not making progress in myself and around me, but I am making progress in myself. I'm developing my brain further. I'm getting stronger in my superpowers and everything. You all just do not understand because y'all closed yourselves off to not only the truth and real facts that are just sitting and standing right there in front of y'all, invisible to others, coming straight from C197 as it continues to merge with 1218 here and denying yourselves of the freedom to love and appreciate the creations of others and maybe even yourselves, your own creations. And you force this handicap of yourselves unto others with hatred upon myself and everyone else who is creative 
and open-hearted and open-minded, fully able to see, appreciate, and recognize because y'all are jealous. Y'all are jealous of our true sight. All you have to do is just open yourselves up and you will have your true sight fully and for real. But we all resist your hatred. Granted, there are those who are still learning to resist the hatred, but they are coping and doing their best on that. And we all shall continue to resist the hatred from all of you. So here's the thing. Haters and bullies. Why can't y'all just find something else that is actually popularly disliked and hated? Like Putin and his recent spiel against the LGBTQ in Russia. Or Donald Trump's freaking wall. Ugh, really taking money out of every single person's pockets. Is he tricking about the people? No, he's not thinking about us. He's thinking about himself. But this is not about Donald Trump. It's about all of you, the haters, and how y'all need to find something else to focus your hatred upon. And I will recommend this, as I did to the haters and rebels in C197 earlier today. Go punch a reinforced bag of sand. Even those of y'all who are stuck to a chair in perma-epic fail, y'all can still reach out and punch a bag. Chair, just punch. <sighs> Still reach out and punch a bag of sand that you ordered from Lowe's or something. And do not harass or target the creative types, the heroes and superheroes, the deities, and all of the innocent peoples in between and everywhere, or myself. With any of that hatred y'all have. And to borrow Dr. King's intro line. I have a dream. A dream where everyone is kind to each other. Regardless of race, religion, color of skin, sexual identity and or orientation. And kindness from those who hate it before. Finding their own happiness and being kind. With hatred and bullying put aside in worn out punching sandbags. Those who I had nightmares of looking to trash my home's yard with running tires and weapons against my person in needless angst, having to defend myself with my own wit and speed. <laughs> now, coming to my front door, standing by the walkway with sincere, apologetic, and kind looks on their faces, and not weapons, but gifts of kindness, love, and sincere smiles. And I'm forgiving of those who used to hate, having realized the folly and wrong of their own ways. I literally actually did have those nightmares, and more recently, the kinder apologetic repentance and remorse of those people standing in front of our house in those dreams. So Chris had a dream that people attacked his house, and now he's saying, oh, I would very much like it if these people would return, but without weapons, they'd give gifts. So once again, Chris is talking about a dream he had, which is very interesting. So... I did. It hurt then, but it's nice to see kindness from everyone. And I appreciate y'all for listening. Thank you all so much. Everyone, have a great and safe day. And know that we, all of us, are working together to keep each and every day great and safe for all of you. Body, mind, spirit, and superpowers. Then Chris is like, I'm going to just talk about Sonic you for a while. <laughs> I've talked with my son, or I've talked with Sonic you, my son, at the Quickville Basilicom. He has been very busy running errands in and around the city, helping with the repairs of the buildings, 
charging and restoring power to places that needed it. He has also been working with Sonic and his crew, spying on Eggman and the other villains, getting intel. So we know what they're plotting and have been doing. He is not freaking AWOL, and nobody has the right to say that. Period. My son is loyal, direct, and honest, and has hardly ever betrayed anyone. He's hardly ever betrayed anyone. He's betrayed people a little. Only, only hardly. And I will create and drop five pound sandbags on each and every one who dare say otherwise at all. Why is he talking about sandbags so much today? I know my son, dearest and for truly, and he has never ever betrayed us or let us down. Do not make me repeat myself. Angry face. So someone asked, what is the Quickville Basilicom? I, I don't even know if that's a word. Oh, it is. It's, it's from uh, Hyperdimensional Neptunia. Okay. Which is where Chris got the whole dimensional merge thing from in the CPUs. So Chris says, A Basilicom is the home of the CPUs of that nation, and the epicenter of said nation. Politics and talks happen there as well. Quickville has one. I will be moving in there myself soon enough. Sabrina, CPU battery charge Blueheart, lives and works from there as well. So there's this big civil war going on in Quickville, and uh, Sanichu is helping people and restoring power. So that's, that's, that's great. I wonder when the next issue of Sonichu is going to come out. Come on, Chris. Aren't you the chronicler of Sonichu? Yeah, tell us what's going on. So for a few hours there, I was actually terrified that Chris might be privating his Twitter account, because then I would not be able to follow him and couldn't continue making the series. I'd have to find out information about him through other sources. But thankfully, he came to their realization that doing that was a moot point. He says, Since if I was protecting my tweets... My responses and thoughts would not be read by those I follow and like, and they wouldn't be able to read my thoughts. Instead, I will go through my follower list and block the obvious ones. So, Chris realizes that protecting his Twitter would make it completely pointless. Now, this is where he starts going a little crazy. He's a bunch of dots, and then, ha 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 ha, really funny, ha ha ha, bunch of angry faces, and the gift of the girl running into the wall again. Want to know how funny Macig people block me? Making me freaking hit the wall after wall is funny to me. And then he posts a video of him screaming at a camera. It's probably his phone. <coughs> he's quite upset that he's being blocked. But I don't know what triggered it this time, because I don't know if like anyone knew blocked him. I feel like I want to scream. My brain is stuck in sad robot mode. I am so sick and tired of all the hatred and harassment. I have a history of being harassed and abused. That is accurate. He seriously has been harassed and abused, but people blocking him on Twitter is not harassment. Uh, each of you haters and harassers should be pinned to the floor by a counselor, psychiatrist, teacher, aide, principal. In total of four abusive, hateful people and your screams of agony recorded onto an audio cassette and a phone and uploaded everywhere on the internet. So, that's uh, talking about what happened to Chris when he was in, like, fourth grade. He was pinned down by his teachers and principal because he was throwing some sort of fit. And this, he has said before that that was the worst part of his life. He said that that was worse than shoving the Sonic Medallion up his butt. I don't know if that audio has been leaked to the internet. I don't know how it would have been. But he obviously, because, he, because this event is so traumatic for him, he wishes it upon all the people he dislikes, which is weird. He, yeah, he's talking about it again. He says, if you lot want me to function and better, then do not ever push me into that PTSD moment of epic insanity. And to get everyone who I have listened to unblock me, now please, as if we have the power to do that, right? Uh, someone comments, Christine, the only one bringing up the PTSD is you. No one made you write the premise- Oh my god, I forgot the game. Did he delete the, the game? Here we go. Okay, so. Uh, Chris, I think he may have deleted this tweet at the moment, but I have it saved because I screenshotted it right after he uploaded it. He said, Oh, I know. How about a video game where you're the screaming victim, and you can't get out of a multi-person grip to save your life, and the only thing you can do is press X to scream and squirm? 
that would be a bestseller as a force to download to each and every hater's device with no way to get back to the home screen or desktop. The title being, All Haters and All Harassers Make Innocent People Something Something. Which makes absolutely no sense. And my favorite comment from that is, Chris, you're bad at video game design, quick time events aren't fun. And I don't mean to make light of Chris's suffering when that happened. Obviously, any event, even if it seems totally innocuous to one person, could be extremely traumatic to someone else. So I'm not going to sit here and say that Chris's feelings of PTSD are not uh, accurate about this past event. But it is a little funny because he's wishing harm upon innocent people. Like literally just the people who follow him on Twitter. Which is obviously not okay. So someone says, Christine, the only one bringing up the PTSD is you. No one made you write the premise of the game. Please calm down. You're an adult. Please stop acting like a child throwing a fit. You're much better than that. And Chris says, there is no game. As if we didn't know that. I was literally explaining what happened to me. For real, back in fourth grade. And I want the haters and harassers to feel what I felt that went on for hours. That I highly doubt it went on for hours. It may have felt like hours to him. You may blame my psychiatrist at Region 10 for making me remember that on authority issues. And then there's two stormy cloud emojis. So he's now ups So part of therapy, especially for PTSD, is confronting the things that make you upset and facing your fears. And Chris is tweeting that it that this whole thing is his therapist's fault for making him relive that event. Which is not good. In, in my opinion, Chris probably needs more therapy than he is currently getting. Like, he might have to go two or three times a week. Because if he's only going once a week, or even like once a month, which could be possible, especially because I think this is court-mandated, then there's no way that he's actually getting what he needs to get over all of his issues, because he has so many of them. And they're they're, they're literally ruining his life. He, like, he seriously needs more help than he's getting. Uh, so, next we have this, this last long thread, and he's sort of summing up everything that has happened so far. He says, Everyone, I have a couple of announcements. Firstly, I sincerely apologize for my mind exploding, going blank, and lashing out as it did earlier. So he does that a lot. Uh, whenever he gets angry and like goes on these rants and fits of rage, he describes that as his mind going blank, which is strange, because, you know, obviously his mind isn't going blank, his mind is producing all of these thoughts and typing out all these tweets. I think that might be his way of saying that he doesn't really have memory of it happening, or he doesn't have control over himself when it's happening. He literally means his his control over himself has gone away, and now his body is acting purely on, like, primal instinct, which is another side effect of anti-anxiety meds. If you're taking too high of a dose, not only can you have those dreams, not only are you going to overeat, but you're going to have angry flashes where you're not in control, and you could possibly not even have memories of not even being in control after the fact. He continues, Mad Munchkin blocking me on Twitter was the straw that broke my head. I still want very much to be unblocked by everyone who had me. By everyone who had of me. What? Second, after Thoro... Is that how you spell Thoro? Tho rough? It might be. I'm not going to make fun of him if I don't even know how to spell it. <laughs> after thorough investigation and talking it out, I've come to the conclusion... Oh, this is the big thing. That MKR and the script string of numbers is not a troll, and indeed genuine of herself. Anyone on the Quickie... Oh, he says Kiwi. Anyone on the Kiwi farms or similar forums who says that she is, in fact, not her at all, an imposter, pulling what content they could from her Twitter and other online accounts. I have been talking with her for over a week, and she has not at all ever asked me or forced me of anything bad or questionable. So, a little background. Uh, if you click on this person's profile you will see that it's a, I believe, a transgender individual. And this this account's tweets are protected. They only have about 42 followers. Uh, their header picture is someone with two different colored eyes and colored hair, so something, you know, uh, approximating what Chris Chan depicts himself as. And um, his, her bio is, Trainer and creator of Night V, 
and Criminaria, Magenta Heart CPU goddess of the nation of Octobactera and Nintendo Switch consoles. So, the same way that Chris is the goddess of the Commodore 64, this person is claiming to be the goddess of the uh, Nintendo Switch. So, obviously, this is clearly a troll who is pretending to go along with Chris's delusions in order to talk to him about them, and maybe down the line, force him to do something. And people are trying to help Chris by telling him this. Like, Chris, this is a troll, do not listen to them, block them now, don't let them ever have any influence over you. But Chris won't listen. Chris is saying that the person is not a troll, and that, quote, his husband Magichan has confirmed her to be legit, and a CPU among the few of us in this Earth 1218's Earth, who are destined to be the CPUs to help out the mutual blah blah blah, who cares? So, Magichan has told Chris that this person is legit, and so therefore Chris is going to believe that this person is legit. And that's bad. That's really bad. Because... Magichan is either a delusion, which means that Chris can convince himself 100% of irrational things if Magichan tells him, or Magichan is another real person who is messing with Chris. Either way, like, trolls have messed with Chris in the past, and he's extremely gullible and he's always believed it. But now that Chris believes that there are, like, gods and psychics involved, there's no way to convince him that it's not the case. Because if Magichan tells him something, and if Magichan is always right, because Magichan's super smart and trustworthy, and Chris's husband, Chris will never be convinced that it's false. Because that would mean that Magichan's wrong, which isn't possible. So, it's it's scary. It's, it's, it's really scary. Uh, Chris continues, And this is not a delusion, illusion, imagination, make-believe, or false. This is very much R-E-A-L real. I've stated this time and time again, and I would very much appreciate it if there was no more talk at all of our true sight, superpowers, and so forth of C-197 being insinuated as false at all. So he's shutting down all conversation that any of this could possibly be false. Quote, and furthermore, I would very much appreciate there being no more harassment or backtalk against MKR. She has faced the online hatred and spoke from the heart. Please be respectful and kind to her. Thank you. So now he's... After this whole thing where he's complaining about being blocked, he's now defending someone who is a troll. He doesn't know that they're a troll, but he's defending them and saying, don't harass them. It's, uh, this is, it's, the situation's ridiculous. And moreover, risking the docs, and I sincerely do apologize in advance, I very much want to be unblocked on Twitter by, and then the list of people who've blocked him. Immediately and post haste, please. And I want everyone to encourage them to kindly unblock him. He's asking all of his followers to uh, get these people to unblock Chris. Which is not going to happen, because none of these people care about Chris. And if a bunch of people came to them and said, hey, please unblock Chris, they're probably going to say, oh no, that's even more annoying, now I'm definitely not going to do it. He finishes with, and I shall not take no for an answer, lest I end up having another mental meltdown, and there shall be no disputing or argumentative discussion on the topic, please. Thank you, be safe, and well, that's all. So, he's saying, get these people to unblock me, I will not take no for an answer. Which is not how it works, because he can't control people, even though he wants to be able to, and he really thinks that he can. And this whole situation is terrible, and I'm scared, and I want Chris to get help. I want Chris to get better help than he's getting, and these trolls that are messing with him seriously need to stop. It's, I've said this several times before, it's one thing to laugh at Chris when he does something ridiculous, it's another thing to force Chris, it's another thing to make Chris look like an idiot by tricking him, and then laugh at him. That's not, that's not okay. Like, I'm not laughing at the fact that he's being tricked by this other person, because it's not funny, he's being taken advantage of. So, if you're going to take anything away from this week, it's that Chris is currently, he's been on the brink for a while, but he's definitely currently on the brink of just having another major meltdown, and maybe this time it won't be on Twitter. And it is legitimately because of these trolls. And the trolls are on both sides. There are people who are... There are trolls who are telling him the dimensional merge isn't real and trying to snap him out of it. And there are trolls who are telling him that it is real and feeding into his delusion. And then there's also nice people who are trying to tell him that it's not real. And I don't know what to do. I don't, I don't want to... It's not that I don't want to get involved. It's that me tweeting at Chris saying, Chris, the dimensional merge isn't real, isn't going to help him. So I don't know what to do. And I want to be more constructive, but I don't know how. Thank you all for watching. Maybe maybe if some people have some 
smart, good ideas in the comments, we can talk about them. I'm currently planning on testing a live stream within the next month, and then I will be planning on having a live stream where I invite people who are subscribed to me and uh, are interested in it. It'll probably ov be over uh, Google Hangouts. Uh, we could have a live stream and we could talk about Chris and our theories about how he's delusional and what's going on, and maybe like who the captain is, and how he's come to these illusions, and maybe how we can help him. Uh, so I'll release more details about that later. I will be talking about this on my Twitter. I'll probably put up a tweet as we get closer to that time saying like, hey, anyone who's interested in this, please, uh, you know, leave a reply on this tweet. And yeah, it's this is, this is not good. Uh, people have been complaining that I have a lot of Christian content on the channel, which was actually never my intention. As far as I'm concerned, I only have one Chris Chan series, which is this weekly Sunday update, and then I make a video about him whenever I feel like it, like, oh, I just came up with this idea about why he might be delusional. Oh, I want to explain why I misgender him. Things like that. Uh, going forward, I actually don't have any more videos about him planned. Now, I will be doing an Absurds video about Sonichu, which is related to Chris Chan, but as far as I know, uh, the next video about him will be a week from now, next Sunday, seeing what happens next week. So, if, you, if you're upset about the amount of Chris Chan on my channel, uh, there's going to be less going forward. Unless you count Sonic as Chris Chan content, in which case there's going to be significantly more going forward. But there's also going to be a lot more different stuff. 